Hi guys, welcome to this special edition of Pro Tips. In this episode, we're going to show highlights of the incredible Comic Con event in Sydney and introduce you to a couple of very interesting guys who joined us on the stand Sterling Osment, who creates 3D printable models using virtual reality, and Mike Bass, who is an incredible model maker, painter, and airbrush artist, is going to talk us through some of his post processing tips. I'm sure you'll learn a lot, so enjoy. <laughs> Get bloom, yeah, rim bloom, which is really nice. Okay, have you seen that? So, you're bringing them really close. Yeah, I have seen it a couple of times, yeah. but I didn't realize that's just from purely pulling it. I thought it was attenuation on the thing. But yeah. into which one? The you just drop it into your sculpt. Oh, okay, so now you can move the light. Oh, and it stays fixed yeah. rather than moving with you. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's a point light or a spotlight with no shadows, it will always push through. It's always accurate, yeah. And you can only have one shadow map per, per light. It, it looked good printed. Yeah, it will. I think you could probably do do some pretty cool stuff here with, uh, with these tentacles. I can they print, they print nice. So you print them as separate pieces and then... Uh, I'd like and to wing it because technically the printer should be able to get up here. Because okay. they're just like supports really. And uh, do you prep it in ZBrush or do you just dump out an STL and hope for the best? Uh, well... I, as picky as I get, I do go through ZBrush. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, I, I like to, I like to keep it tidy. Changing colours is quite simple. I just tip the paints back into the pot. I then run clean water through the airbrush and then uh, put the next colour in, and it's as simple as that. You get what you get is a colour change, but... And would, would you pre-plan where you were going to do that? Yeah, I, t I tend to pre-plan it uh, to a point, but like most things, uh, being artistic, it, it, you, you flow with it. You think, oh, that's a good idea, we'll do it in there, and then you realise, oh, maybe it wasn't a good idea. But at least if you do make a mistake, you can go back over it and, and rectify it. How waterproof is it? Uh, it depends on the paint. Uh, if you've got a, uh, a paint that is full of plasticizer, yeah, it's reasonably waterproof. But with uh, ones which are, um, they go very matte, um, uh, they've got high pigment levels in, water will stain them. So you may actually need to give it a coat of uh, clear or matte varnish to actually seal the paint in. What I'm doing here, I'm just imagining where the light is coming from for this figure, and then I can then just add a little bit of extra detail, define the mouth a little bit more. And all I'm doing is using black at the moment. I'm fairly sure that if I had another color, we could, uh, we could do that. I'll just turn it around. And if you make a mistake, it's easy to, uh, to rectify it. You just go back. Colour, yeah. yeah, I tend to find that uh, most of my mistakes work out to be good mistakes. Yeah. And it's a matter of doing it going from light to dark, back to light again to dark, and eventually you build up the colours to the point where, you, yeah, I'm happy, that's it, finished. So I think that, for black, is more or less done now. Just a little bit there, I've just seen. There we go. Thanks for watching guys. In future episodes, Sterling and Mike will be joining me in the Pro Tip Studio for a more in-depth look at what they do. Remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because I know you won't want to miss them.